everybody. It's so wonderful to see you today on this afternoon. Um, we're really happy that you're here uh, to attend the Library Live um, Level Up Your Research Workshop. We have a really awesome program for you today with student workers um, from the Center for Academic Success Writing Wing, um, student workers from the Archives and Special Collections Library, and student workers from the research re student research consultants, um, all of who will give insider tips on how to get the help that you need um, to level up your course papers and projects. A lot of times this information mm -hmm. is like word of mouth information. And so um, if you um, find something useful today, keep in mind that we are recording the event. So you're welcome to share the link with, um, with your friends um, or with your class colleagues. Um, okay, just a, a bit of housekeeping. Um, library Live, there's so, sort of two types of Library Lives. There's like this kind of stuff where we have student panels um, sharing tips, tricks, and recommendations for how to get the most of the library. And the, for instance, today, the academic, um, the Center for Academic Success Writing Wing. And then we also have um, some more sort of formal to, uh, tutorial sort of workshops. Keep an eye out for our workshop on APA citation that's gonna happen on November 29th on Monday at 4.30. I will definitely send more information to you directly so you can um, make sure to put that on your calendar and attend the event and then also um, have the recording. All of our recordings um, or all of our library lives are recorded and they're, um, they're uh, uploaded onto our University Library YouTube. So follow us on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And I think we even have a TikTok now. Um, so look out for us there. So without further ado, I wanna introduce um, the different departments and um, the heads of the units that um, that uh, organize and also kind of like give um, a direction for the student workers. Um, starting with Iris Aceves, um, she is um, she is the, uh, the 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 one of the directors or coordinators for um, the writing wing at the academic the Center for Academic Success. Oh, I think somebody how might black be males try to provide for their families and how people huh? being racist towards them. So Kalichi, your audio was off. Just make sure that for right now we keep it off till the Q and A. But but thank you. Thank you for being here. Let the ear muted. Okay, let me let me unmute. Um, we also have. Um, <laughs> Hello, uh, Leticia. Nice to meet you. Huh? You. Okay, so um, you know this is a, a live Zoom. So uh, everyone, please go ahead and mute yourself because um, it's sort of like it's hard to talk when there's several other people with noise in the background and stuff like that. It's really nice to meet everybody that's here today. So, um, okay, so let me keep going with the introductions. So um, we also um, have Azalea Camacho. She's our archivist and special collections librarian. Um, and um, uh, Azalea will be um, introducing her students as well. Um, Iris will be introducing her students as well. I think I failed to mention that. And then uh, we have Sarah Baker and Anna Ramirez. Uh, Sarah Baker is the director of the um, student research consultants, which you're gonna find out um, what that is. Um, and uh, Anna uh, is uh, one of the supervisors for the student research consultants. Okay, so I think I'm all done with my introductions. So um, we can go ahead and start with you, Iris. Thank you. Thank you, Leti. So I will take a couple of minutes. Uh, oh, I will take a couple of minutes to uh, introduce both of the tutors we have featured here for today's library live presentation. So um, the first tutor you're going to hear a little bit about uh, is Alex. So this is Alex's last semester as an undergraduate student here at Cal State LA, but do not fear. He will return to Cal State LA uh, for his master's. He's a communications major, minoring in sociology. 
and highly idolizing Clark Kent, AKA Superman. Um, his ultimate end goal was to become a journalist. However, in the past four semesters, he's been given the opportunity to work in the classroom as a TA with one of his professors. So this experience uh, has been lovely for him and he's found his true calling teaching uh, and also one of the reasons why he is a tutor at the writing wing of the Center for Academic Success and using his abilities and love for writing to help students in their academic journey is a rewarding feeling that he wouldn't trade for anything. Uh, and finally, one fun fact about Alex is that, you know, uh, he would like to own a farm someday and in that farmhouse, you know, grow old with all of his farm animals and grow old together with them. Very, very, um, you know, pro-earth uh, future goal for you, Alex. Thank you so much. Our, the other tutor you will be hearing a little bit about uh, is you will be hearing a little bit from is Rebecca. So this is Rebecca's first semester at Cal State LA. Uh, she received her bachelor's degree from Cal Poly Pomona and she is in the English MA program here at Cal State LA. Uh, academically, Rebecca is interested in rhetoric and composition, another good, uh, good, good trait for a writing tutor here at the Center for Academic Success. And in the long term, she hopes to get her teaching credentials and become a high school English teacher. And one fun fact about Rebecca is that she is obsessed with the great British baking show. Um, so she feels inspired by their baking creations and she looks forward to watching the new episode every week. So uh, sadly, this is not a live presentation where maybe Rebecca could make something for us, um, but we are very happy to have both Alex and Rebecca representing the writing wing of the Center for Academic Success. I'll go ahead and go next. Um, um, again, my name is Azalea Camacho. I'm the Archivist and Special Collections Librarian, and I'd like to introduce two of, they're actually alumni now, um, so they were student assistants before, so they're alum now. So the first student I'd like to introduce is Jocelyn Acosta. Um, she has her bachelor's degree in anthropology and a master's degree in anthropology as well from Cal State LA. And then Keshi Zhang, um, who is a recent grad um, and has an, a BA in art in the program in animation. They actually also put together their own bios, so I'm going to have them introduce themselves. Um, so, so if you all can, if that's okay, because they have, they, they wrote their own bios. Okay, cool. All right, um, Jocelyn, if you'd like to start. Hi, my name is Jocelyn Acosta. As Azela mentioned, I got my master's and my bachelor's here at Cal State LA in anthropology. Um, I had an interest in uh, Mesoamerica and Honduran uh, cave archaeology. And so my research focused on that. And as well, um, I was a student assistant here at, at Special Collections. And now I'm, uh, well, I'll get into it later <laughs> in, the, in the presentation. And um, an interesting fact about me is that I, um, I worked in the field uh, archaeological field in the jungle at in Belize. Hello, my name is Hehi Keshi Zhang, and I recently earned my BA in art um, option in animation. I've been working here in special collections and archives since summer 2019. And previously, I had archival experience at CalArts Library of Film and Image Services and Warner Bros. Animation Studios. Um, I'm currently applying to MLAS programs to further a career in arts and media archiving. And we we're supposed to choose a fact beginning with our letter. So my fun fact beginning with K is that I would love to work in the archives at Korea University in Tokyo or the K-pop museum in Korea. Thanks, Keshi and Jocelyn. And just so you know, we're all in special collections right now. So all the backgrounds are, are real. <laughs> Anna, Sarah? Uh, so I'm Sarah Baker, and I'm the research services librarian at Cal State LA and the coordinator for the student research consultants program. And Anna is actually going to introduce our research consultants on the panel. Thanks, Sarah. My name is Anna, and I am the research and instructional assistant, AKA the supervisor of the student research consultants. And um, 
we have only one SRC, but she is amazing. Um, and her name is Rosa, and she did um, put together her own bio. So I do want to allow her to um, tell everybody all about herself. Um, but she's amazing. She's one of our 11 SRCs. Um, and I'll let you, I'll let her take over, but they're all amazing. And she is just one of the amazing students on our team. Thank you, Anna. So hi everyone. My name is Rosa Maldonado and I'm a first year master's student at Cal State LA. I'm currently a Chicana and Latino studies graduate student and hopes in pursuing a PhD in either ethnic studies, American studies, or sociology. I completed my undergraduate coursework at California State University in Northridge in 2018. And um, I guess something that motivates me to pursue a doctoral degree is the research and the professoriate environments. Aside from academic, from my, aside from my academic goals, I'm also a mother of a seven month old. So juggling motherhood, student work life and other family obligations is draining, but the time management I'm learning uh, as a grad student, as well as working and scheduling making is like the best feeling. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but, <laughs> but I feel like I can accomplish a lot when I prioritize those two skill sets. Wow, students, I'm just so, um, I'm just so honored to be in your company and um, all of the different interests that you have in research, all of the different um, things that you described in terms of um, the sorts of uh, challenges and then also too like the beautiful stuff that like, you know, makes up your, um, your day, your day to day as a student at Cal CLA is just so awesome to learn about. And also, I think a big motivation for all of the students in the house, um, you know, students that are on the call, these really are your, these are Cal State LA, uh, bona fide Cal State LA students, just like you. So they're a really um, beautiful example of the types of, um, the types of ways that your uh, educational aspirations can unfold. So really cool to see um, the graduate students and, um, I think are is everybody a gra an, a graduate student in the in the house in terms of the the panelists? You could do, throw me a thumbs up. I might um, have missed that. I think everybody who's on the panel is a grad student. Okay, but I do want to um, I do want to start off with our first question because it's sort of like a question that introduces the services that um, you're in charge of. So um, this question goes out to the panelists and we can kind of go in that order, um, writing wing, um, archive special collections, followed by the SRCs. Um, describe your role and your primary service goal. Uh, and we can kick it off with either, um, I think Rebecca's gonna kick us off. I, I can go ahead and answer this one. Um, and so, uh, so as for the role in primary uh, service of the writing wing for the CIS, um, in essence, it's just to uh, promote the writing process and hopefully, uh, I guess, inspire confidence amongst our students um, through the writing process. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Um, how about um, archive special collections? Yeah, we can go next. Uh, I'll just share a screen for a quick second. Oh, <laughs> I think it's a previous. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hi. Um, so, here at Special Collections, um, some of our service goals revolve around um, community archiving. So, making sure that our collections are relevant to the student population and local population and also accessible. So, um, that means like opportunities for engagement, classes, and workshops so people know how to use materials and what's available. Um, we also have a Mesoamerica and colonial Mexico collection and a lot of other research materials that might not be available at other um, archives. So we make sure that people can tell by the website. We also offer um, maybe in the spring um, a $500 research award for people who utilize the archives in their school assignments. So if that happens again this spring, um, that would be something to look out for in an email. 
Yeah. Uh, and one thing that we wanted to highlight is in one of the pictures um, in the top right, um, that is a photo gallery we had of the um, East LA walkouts. And so it's another example of the way that like the collections that come to the archives um, are then used to uh, be made more accessible. Um, Rosa, you want to go next? Sure. So I'm a student research consultant, or SRC for short, who helps students with basic research. So uh, by basic research, we mean brainstorming keywords, topics for assignments, research projects. We help students find books, articles, newspapers, periodicals, magazines, the list goes on. Um, and we also help students with citation questions. And I do want to preface that we do not edit citations, but we do provide examples of citations for students. I know sometimes students uh, think we're citation wizards and we're not. <laughs> we have basic training. However, we, sh we shouldn't be editing citations, but we can help with examples, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me because I think across the board from the student research consultants like Rosa just described, and then um, the archive special collections, um, which the students described, and then in the writing wing, um, all of those are services that are available to students, but students also who seek out those services, you kind of need to come prepared for them, right? You can't just uh, sort of expect like the night before you know my papers do i'm going to make an appointment uh i really strongly encourage students you know to avoid the stress of that um and to really give yourself students an opportunity um to like value your work and take as much time as possible i know there are so many different time constraints um on on everybody's caring like all sorts of different time constraints and that's kind of like one of the keys of um, higher education, I think, um, and probably, you know, outside of college as well, is time management. Um, but all of these different service areas can help you with um, figuring out how to start developing skills in the research process, um, how to start developing skills that are going to make you a persuasive and effective writer, how to um, seek out these like special collections and archives to really bring something um, interesting to the reports that you, you know, you, you come up with for your assignments. So um, with that, I want to move on to the next question for our student panelists. And this question is kind of like, well, how did you first learn about the position that you're in? How did you first learn about the writing wing, the archives and special collections, the student research consultant positions? And what kind of made you think like, you know what, I should apply for that? Um, so uh, why don't we again start off with the writing uh, wing students or uh, tutors. Cool. And so um, as for me personally, um, I remember one of the tasks that we did for orientation was to sign up for Handshake. And so to simply answer the question, I found out through Handshake. Um, and so um, looking back, I really I wasn't really interested at all to sign up for Handshake just because I felt like it didn't have a purpose. But then I told myself, you know, why not? And then throughout these years, I keep getting like emails about openings on campus. And it, it's kind of just up to you to, you know, if you want to apply, if you're interested, if not, you know, you can just send it to the uh, junk file <laughs> or some sort. But um, as for the latter part of the question, um, as a commuter in a commuter school, um, I felt like I could be doing more with my collegiate experience. And so simply attending classes did not satisfy me. And I just wanted to be more active. And so, um, and so as an attempt for that, um, I wanted to get to know Cal State LA more than just a place for my classes. And through this uh, student employment, I'm actually able to, I guess, get a glimpse of the behind the scenes of Cal State LA and, uh, you know, the process required uh, on the, the teaching end rather than just as a student. And um, I know since many of us are students, you know, we're all experts on, uh, you know, what it's like to be a student and the student life. And so um, as for that, I feel like I'm a really big fan of the quote that goes, um, in learning you will teach and in teaching you will learn. And so I felt like I can learn twice as much just by being a student and a tutor at the same time. And uh, yeah, and so that's my answer for that one. <laughs> 
Any of the other student panelists want to go next? I go. Well, this is my second year. Of oh, the... sorry, uh, Kalet Kalechi. We're having um, just this the student panelists. So uh, you you can add your question though on the chat. So maybe um, uh, a student from Special Collections, and then Rosa, you can go ahead. Leticia. Yeah, Kalechi, could you mute, please? Thank you. Um, how about Rosa, you want to go next and describe, and then we'll go to Archives and Special Collections? Sure. So I found out about the position as an SRC through Instagram. So I think Kelsey's the one that's in charge of the promoting. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I found the decision through Instagram and I remember bookmarking it because I was trying to familiarize myself as a first year master's student to the resources on campus. So I figured, um, you know, why not apply? Uh, the description intrigued me because of the aspect of helping and guiding students through the research process, which is something I'm very much interested in. I like to talk to students and people about what they like, topics, research interests, and just hearing personal stories and how they relate, influence, motivate social change. So that's how I got to know about the SRC position. Great. Uh, what about a student from Archive Special Collections? Sorry, we put a power point together, so we're going to be <laughs> jumping in and out of it. Um, so I, the way I learn about Special Collection is um, I saw an exhibit that we um, that the library had on the first floor on Mesoamerican and Mex and colonial Mexico rare books, and I got really interested that you know we had these um, books in the library, and I also made I had made research appointment at special collections before and then how I found out about applying was through a friend who actually worked at special collections who told me that you know that um, she was leaving and there was going to be positions available at special collections so I applied at the time when I knew that they were um, they were hiring at the moment Yeah, um, I really, I really love how again um, all of the panelists in their respective areas, um, you describe the importance of word of mouth and also sort of like um, taking initiative to investigate something, right? Like you, you just described, Jocelyn, like you saw one of the exhibits and you're like, what is that? Um, I think that's such an important skill for um, for students is. Um, being like taking chances and taking risks when you have a question about a service or something that you see on campus. Um, I want to um, now also like handshake that's another resource that you'll find in an email or something like that investigating like well what is that and then um, figuring out the answer to that. I want to now get to a little bit more specificity. Um, because, you know, right now it's the midterm of the semester and everybody's kind of in that crunch time of like writing papers, researching a new topic to, you know, write a, a, a larger paper about or on, um, getting help with citations. So I want to ask this question um, and uh, it's a sort of question about like, what do our students need to know and kind of prepare ahead of time before actually coming to you um, with their appointment. So um, maybe you can describe like the appointment process and then what do students need to bring to that appointment? Um, let's go ahead and start it off with the writing center or uh, writing wing students yeah, or um, tutors. Yeah, so the writing center is, um, we're, or the writing wing, we're located in the library. Um, but today I'm going to walk everybody through um, making a Zoom appointment instead. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So we'll start at Google. Um, this is how I always enter um, the writing wing. Um, my Google search. Nobody look at that. So we'll do Cal State LA Writing 
um, tutoring, you could do um, writing help, writing um, academic tutoring, you could really put in most keywords as long as it has something to do with tutoring. Um, we're specifically writing um, and then just enter. It should be the first one that comes up. You're looking for the Center for Academic Success. Um, so I'll go ahead and click on that one and scroll down. Um, so here is exactly where we wanna be. You can make a um, tutoring appointment here. Um, or if you just wanna like, if you have questions and you're not sure like where to go, you can go ahead and jump straight into the Zoom re reception room. So you click here. Um, and then um, this is where you would also go for like, um, like um, math tutoring or things, um, that's this one, where this one, um, the writing support. If you were to click this, if I were to do that right now, I would enter the Zoom um, waiting room for the writing center. So we're not gonna do that. <laughs> um, but also another resource is back here on the previous page. Um, if you go down to student resources, uh, there's a, um, a little video right here on how to make an appointment. And this walks you through the appointment process step by step. It's really helpful. Um, if you find that you're going to be coming here a lot, um, you can go ahead and bookmark this page and then it'll just be right up here for you um, for easy access. Um, so otherwise, um, for the actual meeting itself, once you've made your appointment, and you've decided that you're coming in, um, we do ask that you bring your prompt, um, bringing the prompt that your professor has given you. Yeah, the thing is that I'm um, taking a class right now, and I don't know if I can stop that. Oh, actually, we can all hear you. So <laughs> please go ahead and mute because we're, we can all hear you in the Zoom, um, Kuzoo. So, um... So once again, you're gonna to wanna to bring your prompt um, that will help us um, know where you're at. Um, Cause we do a lot of different papers. We work with a lot of different disciplines. So um, by bringing your prompt with you, um, we can kind of instantly be on ground zero with you. Like where are we coming from? What are we building together? Um, if you do have a paper, we want you to bring that in too, um, so that we work with what you have, but it's not necessary. Um, if you don't have a paper yet, if you're still brainstorming, you could come in with nothing and we'll work with you. We'll help you find a topic. Um, we'll help you find some, um, write your thesis, find some things that you're interested in. Um, so really the most important thing is just the prompt. Uh, and with that, Rebecca, I wanted to ask a little bit of um, detail, like what is a prompt? What What is that exactly? Yeah, so um, great question. That is just um, the assignment that your professor gives you. So they'll usually just be one sheet of paper um, that has a, some sort of a challenge for you, like in the book we're reading, make an argument from this point of view, or maybe it'll be um, in your class, write a lab report about this certain, um, I don't know, I'm not a science person, <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's, a, it's the assignment that your professor gives you. Um, usually you'll be able to access it online, even if you do forget it. Okay, thank you so much. Um, uh, what about um, archive special collections? What's the appointment process like and what should students bring to that appointment? Um, let me just share. Sorry. So um, for appointments, we usually for right now, because of because uh, we're still during we're still in the pandemic. Um, right now we are our reading room is closed, but we do have a QR code on our door that you can scan to make appointments. So we also, you can also make your appointments online on special, at special collections. Um, so if you go to Cal State LA's website and if you click library, um, you could go to service or research and you'll see special collections down here. And if you scroll all the way down, there's a request for research help and then request for appointment. You could also talk, you could also, you will be, a, you could also chat with us in LibChat and if you have any questions, um, but for requests for research help, this helps in the sense if you don't, if you're looking for primary sources on certain topics for class, so um, say you're looking for something about the Chicano movement, so you would 
basically just write your information here and then ask your question. So maybe you're looking for women in the Chicano movement so we could help you. So we could make an appointment and you could talk to either um, Azela Camacho, uh, the archives librarian, and she could come and she could give you advice of what you know, what you could look for in our, in our archives. And the other one, so research requests. So this is more, you already know what you're looking for. So say you're looking for a book or a thesis on like that was um, from Casa de from a previous student. Um, so basically you'll just put information here um, about the title of the book or the call number or something like that. Or if you're looking for an arc, like an archival uh, material, you'll put the, the name of the of the collection and then you'll put the box number. Um, and usually if you could find our collections here um, in our website, so you could explore um, our website and see stuff and then it, it will take you directly to our, um, so if you keep clicking, you eventually get, uh, oh no, sorry. You'll get to, um, I think archives online of California. Um, so it'll take you and shows you all our um, collection there and you can see our finding aids and then you can look into that um, as well. And we usually have some workshops available throughout the semester or classes that we could go in more detail of like what we have and like what our collections are. I uh, just don't wanna really get into it so much. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> and uh, let me go back to... Um, so here, oh, so here we have like uh, consultations. So, so like I said, the collections. Uh, you click the find name, but yeah, that's basically um, it's just a lot of information. But it's easy to make an appointment, and we could show you and and take you through our website and our collections and how to navigate our our collection and what's what materials you need for your class, um, if you need primary sources, um, books um, that are in special collections. If you search them through the library and you see if they're in special collections, then you could make an appointment and look at that book as well. Thanks so much for that detail, Jocelyn. I And I really appreciate that you said primary sources because I think a lot of times students will have um, an assignment where they're assigned to um, either look up a primary source or use a primary source or cite a primary source. And um, students, we have this really fantastic collection of um, archival material and other special collection materials. Um, and all of those are um, examples of primary sources. So you can really um, like tap into the collections that we have at Cal State LA, the archives and special collections and bring something, introduce something really cool to your class um, that um, has some uniqueness to it. And also is like really intriguing for you, you know, um, something that's like, wow, it makes you, it sort of sparks your, in investigation or your detective sort of mind. So um, now let's go to our um, to our SRC um, Rosa, um, who will describe what's how do you make an appointment and like what should I bring to the SRC appointment, Rosa? Okay, I'm going to share my screen. So I wanted to highlight a couple of things. So this is the university library website. So I'm gonna highlight how to make an appointment. Um, we have two platforms. So I'm gonna first talk about uh, the appointment platform. So when you hover over to the research tab, you'll see research help. So you click there. And then it shows here, or it shows a link that you can make an appointment with the student research consultant. And if you click there, uh, you have a couple of instructions on how to get to this uh, interface called Navigate. So I'm gonna actually show you what that looks like. Let me. Okay, so this is what uh, the Cal State LA portal looks like. And when you go, 
on it, this is my student uh, account, by the way, you'll see this navigate LA appointment scheduling. So this is where you can make an appointment. Um, you click there and then you'll click to return to navigate. And you wanna make sure you are accessing the live site. And then from there, you'll, so these are my classes. Uh, on the right-hand side, you'll click on the get assistance uh, icon. And here you can make appointments to um, uh, learning assistance and undergraduate advisement. For SRCs, you want to click learning assistance. Um, and then for the service, as you can see, there's uh, resources for graduate students. And then this is where SRCs come in. So you either have a question in regards to basic research or citation help, uh, either or. I'm going to click basic research just to show you how that looks like. And you pick a date that works best for your schedule. So I think you're going to find an available time. And then this is what it looks like. You get to choose the time frames. And one thing I did want to highlight is that these appointments are 30 minutes. So with 30 minute appointments, that's very limited. So um, some of the tips, I think I think we're gonna, can I talk about tips already, Letty or? Okay, so some of the tips for Navigate and how to take advantage of the 30 minutes is to be prepared, have your assignment and prompt ready. Um, also, if you're looking to uh, brainstorm, or have SRCs brainstorm with you, uh, we encourage you to consider the following questions. How knowledgeable are you on the topic? That is a great starting point for us because if a student comes in with uh, trying to research uh, a certain research uh, or trying to identify uh, sources for a research question and SRCs might not know a lot on the topic and the student also might not know, then that kind of, uh, becomes a brainstorming session. And we wanna make sure that we're keeping in mind the time. Um, we also want you to consider what fields does the topic fall into because there's some topics that are very interdisciplinary and that's like the good part about it. Um, also, um, what is your professor asking for? So that's a very important question to consider if there's any guidelines on that. Actually, I totally forgot to finish making the appointment. I was already going into tips. So um, yeah, you click a, um, a time that works and then you'll either get uh, whichever SRC is available at the time or you get to select an SRC. In this case, uh, Cordelia is available for a Tuesday appointment and you could just hit schedule and that's how you make an appointment. But again, just reiterating the 30 minute appointment um, as well as, let's see, Oh, if you have any um, or you need any accommodations, feel free to reach out to Anna Ramirez. Um, I think that's uh, very important to know because some students might be able to get a little bit more time than 30 minutes. Um, and also, if there's any other like questions you need, um, you can also include that in this uh, like comment section. It kind of, it helps us as SRCs to kind of be able to pinpoint your question and prepare for it before your appointment. Um, and then I also wanted to talk about one uh, other aspect. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And, okay. okay, so we're back at the University Library website and I want you to look at the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, you see this chat feature? This is called, uh, the look chat. So you get to write your name and put in your email and you can actually write us a question and we'll be able to answer it at that time. Uh, SRCs are often on this uh, chat feature as well as some librarians and this chat feature is actually 24-7. That does not mean SRCs are working 24-7, but there might be an, a library around the world that, a librarian around the world that is answering the question. So this is also a good kind of resource to use. And for this, in order to utilize it, it'd be more like on the spot. If you already have like a question in mind and you need like three to four uh, resources, I think this is where it becomes more beneficial for students. But for something more complex, something that 
uh, requires a bit more uh, brainstorming, critical thinking, then we highly recommend uh, creating a, a 30 minute Zoom appointment. Yeah, you know, Rosa, um, I was just thinking right now as you were describing that process and kind of, you know, um, really all of the student uh, panelists who are sharing um, the information about how to make an appointment with their respective services, you know, what to bring to that appointment. Um, I was just thinking that maybe like it's been the experience of a lot of students that they come to the SRCs like once a semester or archives and special collections once a semester or the writing wing once a semester. Um, and really, um, it's kind of like what I'm hearing from all of the different students is that there's like different levels of sort of like um, types of research needs that and writing needs that kind of go across the board. So you can go in with um, more like of an in intention to like brainstorm, like, hey, like what is, what are archives and special collections? Like what's in there? And how can I use those primary sources um, to elevate my research? Or, you know, I have to write this research paper. It's my first time writing a college level research paper. I'm kind of like, I don't even really know. It has to be on environmental um, justice and I'm not even really sure what to write about. Um, or like I have a prompt and I'm kind of freaking out. I, my professor is like my first time writing a paper. I don't know, I'm worried about my grammar, like all this stuff. And those are sort of like brainstorm kind of appointments. And then you have, once you kind of, you know, cross that level, the type of, the type of appointments that you can have are, start, are gonna start to get more and more precision the more that you use them. So like what I'm trying to say, in a long-winded way, students, is that take frequent advantage of these services because that's really going to help you um, gain an understanding of your area. It's going to increase your confidence, and you're going to be exposed to a lot of um, really cool stuff and skills um, that, are, again, are just going to increase your um, your work. They're going to level up your research and your projects. So um, we um, I do want to leave a little bit of time for questions, and we have about 15 more minutes. So what I wanted to ask right now is sort of like switch it up a little bit and ask for like um, all of the different students to either tell it like to tell us about like a fun experience you've had something completely unexpected or some sort of insight that you've gained um, in your role as um, as a student worker, as a, as a student tutor. Um, why don't we start with the writing wing? Someone from the writing wings, fun experiences, unexpected surprises, and insights. Yes. And so um, I'll go ahead and give an insight, um, and one of which is actually building camaraderie and bonding with students. Um, you know, it's, I know I feel like freshmen especially and transfer students, it can get a little intimidating sometimes to ask help from your instructor. So um, it's our hope that, you know, maybe by asking a fellow student, you know, that'll alleviate that uh, fear and anxiety with asking for help. And also, as um, Iris mentioned earlier, that feeling of, you know, knowing that you've helped a student is something that's so lovely that um, I feel like everyone should experience it. And um, lastly, for this question as well, um, another insight is that um, as a student employee at Cal State LA, um, it kind of gave me an environment to, uh, you know, grow professionally, not just as a student, but also as a, an employee. And so all of a sudden, Cal State LA is not just a place for classes. It's, you know, it's a place where you learn, and it's also the place where you get to exercise the concepts that you've learned into practice. Thank you so much, Alex. Um, that, you know, you bring a lot of really important um, aspects um, to like what makes, you know, sort of um, the student experience, the student experience. It's not uh, simply the academics, although that's a really strong part. A lot of it also has to do with like feeling like Cal State LA is my university, you know, which it is. So um, Rebecca, do you want to share? Yeah, um, I completely agree with everything that Alex said. Um, I also experienced that. Yeah, before um, having this job, I was just like a cashier. Um, and so that's really, it like drains you. Like I would get off work and just feel so tired and just so done, like done with people. 
But um, when I go to work at the writing center, like I get to talk to students and I just I ask them like, how do you feel about this paper? What are you thinking? And they tell me and we have like great discussions. Um, and I end up feeling like more like alive afterwards. Um, and yeah, like like Alex said, like I'm learning too. Like um, we're we're all writers, we're all students. So um, we're all working together and um, it's a really great like inclusive environment. Awesome. Thank you, Rebecca. I really appreciate how you, you know, highlight that point about learning being sort of a mutual kind of process, a, a process of like talking and discussing. And um, students, you know, I really want to emphasize that to you, that part of your development in learning, you know, your respective major, um, your discipline, and also like writing about it, a lot of it has to do with talking about it. Um, and so now um, I want to ask the uh, students from Archives and Special Collections, fun experiences, inside tips, um, unexpected things. I should you go first. <laughs> um, so something that applies to both me and Jocelyn is that even though we're graduated, we can still work at Special Collections for another semester, which is really great. And both of us, Jocelyn, maybe you want to describe yours more, but um, we were brought on for another project. So extending into next year, um, we can continue to work here because apparently we did a good job, maybe. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was very impactful for me for working here. Um, also, because we there's a lot of um, local archives here, that's a lot of the specialty. Um, I end up recognizing a lot of people I know from Koreatown. So I'll be like, oh my gosh, I know that elder, or I know this person was involved in this thing that we were, were archiving that I see in the collection. So that's very cool. Um, I also was able to work on a Korean and English oral history, which I've never, like, I never, I always put Korean language on my resume, but now it's finally being used. So it was very cool. Um, so for me, a uh, fun experience for me was actually being to work with exhibit installation and also curated exhibits. Me and Keshi also have co-curated co um, one of the exhibits online that we have available. It's the Pandemic Diaries one. And so that's been fun experience to be able to be part of and um, also like finding random objects and collections when we're processing um, and also some cool stuff. So I've found letters from like presidents, um, stuff from like just random objects. So like paintings that like probably were in offices. So some fun things like that we find. And also like Keshi said that us working here and having the experience is we've been able to get um, pos another positions that, that we don't have to be student assistants anymore, but you know, utilize our experience and, and actually have a, a like I'm on a project grant position, so I'm a project archivist. And um, so it's kind of cool to see, you know, that we work in a space and then to be able to actually uh, move forward into another position at, at the university. And, you know, we enjoy working here. So that's kind of pretty cool that we get to stay a little longer. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Thank you for describing both of you that sort of like hands on type of work that um that you unfold at the archives and special collections and for reminding us that la our city of angels los angeles we're that we're one of the epicenters of the of art right of the art world and there's so many awesome artists that have been trained and have come out of cal state la if you you know do a deep dive into the history of cal state la you'll see that so many artists from like fine artists to performance artists to media artists um, they're from Cal State LA. So thank you so much for bringing that aspect out. Um, and then we have um, Rosa from the Student Research Consultant, something that, um, you, that has been fun, unexpected, or some insight you'd like to give. Yeah, so I guess something unexpected that happened. I mean, I think Alex touched upon it that we kind of build relationships with students once they recognize that we we're also students. So I actually had a student that came in for an English paper. She was uh, she was interested in looking into a specific um, fishing technique in environmental science. Um, 
English and environmental science. I don't know what happened there, but <laughs> interdisciplinary work, right? So um, the student was describing this project to me and I was familiar a little bit with what she was talking about. So I, I guess I did a really good job in the first session that kind of extended into a seven meeting kind of session. So I, I, the student came back every week and we worked on specific uh, objectives or at least we strategized into how to break down her project. So um, there were three sessions where we were looking for articles, books, periodicals, et cetera. We also began looking into external websites uh, and identifying what is a credible source and what isn't. We spent three sessions looking at examples of citations. Uh, and our last session was actually our goodbye session, the bibliography. So it was very, <laughs> it was very uh, rewarding and also saddening a little bit just to see, well, it was rewarding to see the, like the, uh, transformation of this student and their ability to uh, go through the research process and produce a project. But also I was sad that I was already getting used to seeing this student and I knew that she'd be doing great things in her field. So that was kind of bittersweet, but I mean, these relationships uh, form and it's very uh, enlightening, especially right now since we work from home. So it's kind of very comforting to have that go on. Thank you so much, Rosa, for um, describing to the students exactly how those, like from a one-time session, you can really grow and have more of a, of a consistent um, interaction um, with the SRCs. And I'm guessing also that would be the same with the writing, writing wing tutors and with the archives and special collections. Um, students who, um, you know, all of all of the different roles that we described today, these are all free services for students. Again, I want to emphasize something that I said in the beginning to the students is that a lot of your, a lot of like your success in learning and also like trying out stuff at Cal State LA kind of happens in these moments where you learn about this service and then you kind of like go find out about it and go make the appointment and kind of see what it's about. Um, that kind of inquiry and um, sort of disposition for like finding the things that are going to help you succeed is really going to come in handy for you. Um, we have about five more minutes left on the Zoom. This has been such a fantastic panel. I want to ask um, the students to add any questions that they might have on the chat. We've been answering the questions. Um, we answered, you know, the question about, oh, there's an article I need and I can't get access to it. You're welcome to seek out um, support from the SRCs to help you locate that article. Um, we also answered um, other questions uh, in the chat are so are there any questions um, okay so I, I want to add in here that the SRCs uh, just making a note that um, the student uh, research consultants they uh, are coming from a, a huge sort of cross section of disciplines from history majors to bio majors anthro English uh, rehab services Pan-African studies, Chicano studies, Chicanx, Latinx studies, computer science. So, you know, definitely whatever your research area is, you can feel confident students that you're gonna have um, someone at the other end to help you. Again, don't wait until the very last minute when you're like in panic mode and, you know, I know it happens. That's one of the realities of college life. I'm sure almost everybody probably has had that experience, but to the best of your ability, I recommend to avoid that, like really kind of sketch out your time um, in a planner or whatever device you use. Um, yeah, to level it up, right? I love, I think I think my colleague Azalea um, uh, came with that with that description of like leveling it up. I think I'm, I'm borrowing it from you, Azalea. And I love that because um, really it's kind of like, it reminds me of like a video game, right? Like the more you sort of play it, the better you get at it. So, okay, so we have a question um, I put in the from chat. a student. Okay, and you, so we're going to look for your question in the chat, okay, Kalechi? So yeah. thanks for drawing my attention to that. 
Um, okay, how is the tutoring going to open the center next semester? Good question. And maybe we could have um, uh, all of the different representatives talk about that, or perhaps the student, um, the directors of those respective programs, you can maybe provide some info, yeah. you know, because we're, we're still kind of like in pandemic life, right? So Kalechi, go ahead and mute yourself. And then um, our, we're going to get the answers to that. Great. Thank you, Leticia. So for the writing wing of the Center for Academic Success, where we do all writing tutoring, but also in the tutorial wing where we have all of the math and physics and chemistry tutoring, we are currently open, um, just like the library is open and some folks are already going to in-person classes. Um, we have some in-person writing tutoring appointments, and we also have online Zoom tutoring appointments. So log on, um, as Rebecca showed everyone, sometimes it's easier to just open up Google and Google Castellay Writing Health. Um, the, you, we will be the first connection that you will see on that list in 0 0.003 seconds that you'll get from Google um, and, and make an appointment with us. So we are currently open for in-person and online tutoring and we'll continue to do so for spring semester. Thank you, Iris. So your, your question was answered, Kalechi. We're going to have um, the Zoom tutoring is still going to be available. Um, is that right, Iris? And then also, how about in-person? Yes. yes, both Zoom and in-person we'll have, we currently have, and we'll continue to have next semester. Thank you. Um, excuse me, I have one question though. But, but, but the classes will be on in-person next semester, all the classes. Well, that for that, Kalechi, I recommend that you keep an eye out on the schedule of classes and to be in communication with your professors. That's like the best recommendation I can give as far as like, are, is my class gonna be in person or online next semester is to um, keep an eye out on the schedule of classes and to um, ask the professor that's gonna teach that class. Sound good? Okay, what about um, the special collections and archives in spring? Um, well, right now it's still, we're still figuring it out, but right now we're open only by appointment from Mondays through Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, but we're hoping to be, actually, if you haven't been to special collections and archives before you know, the pandemic, we're open to anyone that would like to come in. Um, so we're hoping eventually to be that way, but I don't think it'll be that way in the spring. Um, so we'll probably still function as appointments, but hopefully at some point we'll go back to um, inviting people inside our special collections without an appointment. Um, it doesn't mean that we're closed, we're just um, only open by appointment. Wonderful. Yeah, and I, I think it's sort of speaking to like the reality of our COVID life, right? How there's still lots of um, sort of unknowns and and ways of like connecting, even if we can't be there in person. So um, the important thing is um, kind of like stay up to date by visiting the website and um, using the strategies we showed you today about how to make those appointments. And then um, SRCs. Yes, so currently we offer um, virtual services. Um, so just as Rosa was telling everybody that we're available through Navigate with 30 minute um, appointments and we're also on LibChat. So if you have a, you know, basic directional 15 minute question, you can talk to somebody right now, 24 seven. Um, but if you have more questions about your research and you need a little bit more guidance, that's what Navigate is for, 30 minute sessions. Um, for spring though, um, we're hoping to have somewhat of a hybrid model um, to offer services in person, but we're still gonna keep our Navigate appointments. We're still gonna keep with the LibChat 24 seven. Um, we're just gonna have um, in-person services in spring. Wonderful. So um, I want to uh, bring us to a conclusion, even though it's, I, I'm reluctant to conclude because it's such an awesome conversation. Students who are still on the call, um, I would like you to put a reaction emoji in the chat, possibly a thumbs up if 
you're going to reach out to either of these areas, the writing wing, the SRCs, or the archive special collections. Throw a chip, throw an emoji if you're going to, you know, use these services now that uh, we've talked about them and introduced them. Also, keep an eye out for our um, Cal State LA uh, YouTube. Um, we can put the link in the chat again. The YouTube is where we're putting all of the recordings to the library live session. So if you miss one, not a problem. In a few days, we're going to have this link up so you can share it with um, with your friends. Um, we also have some um, some workshops coming up. Um, so on November 15th, we're going to have a panel of, uh, of uh, Cal State LA alumni. So you can hear like what life is like from you know sort of the other side of you know graduation and then on november 29th we're going to have an apa citation workshop and tips and tricks for avoiding plagiarism so thanks very much students i wish you all the best wish you lots of stamina for you know the midterm and lots of success for your finals have a wonderful rest of the day